Hi, Stuart Talley here to do an update on the ongoing Pinnacle Metal on Metal Hip trial. Uh, today there was opening statements in the case, uh, and we first heard from the plaintiff's attorney who um, really sort of took a new approach in this case. This is the fourth Pinnacle trial, um, and there was an, a new argument that was made during uh, opening statements that we haven't seen before. Um, the, the plaintiff's attorney went through the, the typical um, arguments that he has made in other cases, which is uh, the fact that uh, this was a um, uh, hip that was based on uh, poor technology, uh, that it was a hip that had failed, metal on metal had failed in the past, uh, and that the company, uh, purely to get market share, decided to come out with a metal on metal hip, even though they knew uh, that metal on metal hips were inferior to metal on plastic hips. Uh, he also discussed uh, the fact that many doctors had complained of problems and raised them multiple times. Uh, but despite that, uh, what Depew did was they attacked the doctors. Uh, they called the doctors bad surgeons, tried to make the doctors look bad. Uh, and so that's, those are the arguments that we've seen in other cases. Uh, he also talked about um, the, the marketing of the hip and how the marketing was deceptive and some of the tests that they ran uh, in clinical studies that they had done actually produced fraudulent results. The thing that made this opening statement different from all the other cases is there was a discussion of what we call a manufacturing defect. Uh, the plaintiff's attorney went into great length about how the manufacturing process for the metal on metal hips was flawed. Uh, and actually did not conform to Depew's own specifications and the specifications uh, that they submitted to the FDA to get approval to sell this hip. Uh, specifically, he discussed uh, the fact that these hips, um, in order to prevent uh, wear and to prevent ions from being released, uh, they have to be coated uh, with a sp specific kind of chemical. And apparently the company was using uh, different chemicals to coat the hip, to coat the metal. Uh, they were supposed to use nitric acid and instead they used citric acid. Uh, and apparently uh, that makes a big difference uh, in the performance of the hip. Uh, the discussion during opening was that the hip produced five times as many ions with this inferior coating. Uh, there was also discussion about how uh, some of the hips uh, were made using a softer metal uh, than was originally included in the specifications. Um, the softer the metal, the more wear you're going to have. Uh, there was also a discussion about the size of the balls and, and the head. Um, in order for this hip to work correctly, uh, the ball has to be the perfect size to fit within the cup or the head. Or, I'm sorry, the cup or the shell. We call it the shell. Uh, they have to be a perfect fit. And what Depew was doing was they would polish the head, that's the ball, and while the ball was still hot uh, from the polishing procedure, they would measure it to make sure it was the right size. Well, apparently what happens is the ball, as it cools, changes sizes. And that can make a big difference at the end of the day. Uh, and so this new uh, manufacturing defect argument is something that we haven't seen in any of the other cases. And it will be interesting to see how that plays out in the trial with the experts. Um, presumably there will be some testimony that uh, the specific plaintiffs in this case, there's five plaintiffs, all New York residents, um, there'll be specific testimony about how their hips uh, did not conform to the specifications that Depew had internally and the specifications that they provided to the FDA to get the HIP approved. Uh, so that was the uh, plaintiff's opening statement. Uh, we'll have some more videos later on uh, where we discuss what the defendants are going to say. Um, you know, we've seen the arguments before uh, on the defense side. Uh, they like to point out to the jury that uh, all HIPs fail, um, all HIPs generate debris and uh, without really explaining that there's a difference between plastic debris and metal debris. Uh, but this is the argument that they've made in the past and I expect to see it again. It'll also be interesting to see what they have to say about the manufacturing defect. So stay tuned, we'll have another update uh, soon. Um, we'll try to do these as often as we can. 
Uh, sometimes it's difficult because we have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, but if you have a pinnacle metal on metal hip, you have any questions about the litigation, about the trial, you can always call us. You can reach us at the phone number on the screen. Uh, you can fill out one of our online forms and a lawyer will call you right back.